Happy New Year everyone! Guess what? New Year, new channel! Nobody cares about drawing in 2021, so we are becoming a gaming channel with live streams, game reviews, game commentary and reaction videos to the biggest gaming news of the industry. From Minecraft to Among Us, you will find the most innovative and best gaming content on this channel. And we will rename this channel into Robert's Gaming Unlimited Territory. Ah, all right, now that we have that out of the way, let's get back to draw and talk. Uh, towards the end of 2018, I had two videos. Well, I made two videos, this one and this one, and they were quite successful, but especially on the second one, because I ran through it quite fast. People didn't get everything, especially about how to use colors and, and sort of selections. So I want to go back and address that in this video. Let's get started. Let's take a look at this bike sketch I did the other day. There are several ways to color this, but let's start with the simplest way, using a brush and painting it in. For that I create a new layer that I put below my line layer and just take my favorite hard brush and just start outlining the shape of the bike. I make sure to keep within the lines making sure that I zoom in as much as I need it. Here you can do two things again. You could just fill out all of the shape with your preferred hard brush. This is something you can see me do here with the back wheel. But another maybe faster option would be to finish the outline and then take the flood fill tool and just fill the inside of our outline by clicking in it. Now, the issue here is that we have a soft edge on our brush and we will have this area between the outline and the filled in area that has no real color in it and just looks weird. We will have to make sure to fill this in as well. So you see me here meticulously going over these bordering areas and painting over them with my brush. Might seem a bit like extra work, but remember, you just fill the inside of your shape with just one click. So in the end, this is still quite a fast approach. Now comes the part that was a bit too fast in the previous video. I create a new layer for a new part of the bike and I fill it with a new color. Here you can see that I don't really care about being super tight with my lines when it comes to the outside of the bike. There I just make sure that the color covers all the areas that are needed and the rest I'm quite sloppy. Where I do pay attention is the interior lines where the new shape or area of the bike that I want to color ends. There I use the same method of slowly and meticulously following the lines and correcting with an eraser if needed. Why I don't care about being so precise on the outside of the bike is because I have a mask for that. Well, it's not exactly a mask since sadly sketchbook does not support masks, but I can use the original shape of the bike that I colored in as a mask. I'm going to hide the lines layer and I'm going to select the base shape layer. Here, I'm going to use the magic wand tool to select all the area outside of my basic shape. And with this empty area selected, I go to the layer with the new shape I just colored in and hit the delete key. Since I colored in the area outside of my bike's shape, the area that now I have selected on, on this layer, it will delete everything that's in that selection. Now I can lock the transparency of the layer and start painting over my new shape. So this is how easy and fast this goes. This means that you can create new layers, paint on them, and you don't have to worry about going outside of the lines of your sketch because you can always go back to your shape layer, select everything outside of that shape, return to the layer that you're working it, and just hit that delete key and erase everything there. This is something that should speed up your process quite a bit and also make you paint a little bit more stress-free, not having to worry about being precise within the lines all the time. At least you have areas where you can relax a little bit and just really have fun and draw in big shapes. Let us talk about another way of filling areas with color. 
We did the brush approach with painting in the whole shape, but also drawing an outline and filling the interior of it and fixing up the empty areas in between. What you also can do, if you want to be super precise, is to use the lasso tool. Before I start lassoing, I create a new layer, of course, then I select the lasso tool and follow my lines precisely, trying to stay on the lines themselves. Now this is a little bit up to you if you like the lasso tool or the polyline more. I prefer the lasso tool because it always creates a, creates a nice straight line between the two ends. So play around a little bit and see which one works better for you. Just as before, you can go outside the lines to finish a selection quickly if you are also outside the shape of the sketch. So in this case, I did not have to worry about staying on the lines when I was at the bottom of the shape. Once I filled my selected area with a flood fill tool, I just go down to the layer with the full shape of the bike, select outside of it, return back to the layer where, uh, that I just worked on and hit that delete button. And as you can see, that deletes everything outside of the bike's shape. And coloring in this shape is similar to what I did before. I just lock the layer transparency again and start painting over the areas. I'm going to use different values, suggest light here and shadows there. After I'm done coloring in this layer, I can also return to my uh, bike's shape layer, lock the transparency there as well, and start painting in some of the shadow areas here too. Since I have the different areas of the bike on uh, different layers, I don't have to worry about overlap or sticking to the lines. I can easily color below and above because everything stays nice and crispy on their own layer. Another good thing about using different layers as masks is that I can always create a new layer and brush over the area I need colored. For the wheels, I wanted to bring in some brown red hues, so I created a new layer for this. And once I was done, I went to the shape layer, the shape of the bike below, selected the area outside of the shape again, went back to the brown red color layer and hit delete. Then I just merged down this layer onto my shape layer and the color was applied. It can be this fast and this easy and you really don't have to worry about sticking within the lines or even, even if you're not worrying, like you don't have to go with the eraser and nicely clean up outside the shape because you're just much faster if you delete that area. So that was it for this video. I hope that this is more clear and you can use these steps in your workflow, speeding it up for yourself and having more fun in your drawing and rendering process in Sketchbook. Feel free to leave questions and feedback in the comment section below. I always make sure to read it and respond as soon as I can. Also tell me what other software you are using or what other software you might need help with. And if I can, I'll try my best to help. Anyways, this was it for this first video of the year. I do hope you enjoyed it. I want to continue with regular live streams as well and uh, interact more with you guys. Maybe have some more competitions as well. Let's see what this, uh, this new year brings us. Anyways, let's look forward to uh, hopefully much more fun year this year. But until then, the most important thing as always is that you guys have a great time and see you in the next video. Bye bye.